on 20th October 2011, this not so good quality video clip popped up on YouTube, one of the most popular social media video sites in the world. Anyone who was familiar with the happenings in Libya at the time would quickly click that the country's president was probably toppled, if not assassinated. There's no hiding the jubilation in Tripoli. Scenes repeated again and again across Libya overnight. Indeed, moments later, news on mainstream international media was awash with the information about Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's overthrow and death. Seemingly in a celebratory mood, some Libyans took to the streets to rejoice the death of a man they described as a dictator. The new government is consolidating the control over the country, and one of the world's longest serving dictators is no more. But was he? The situation in Libya was created by the arrogant and irresponsible actions of some actors that took actions that were against the express position of the African Union. This was Uganda's president, Yoweri Tibuhaburua Kaguta Museveni. I, Yoweri Tibuhaburua Kaguta Museveni. He had just taken oath as Uganda's president for another five years, a term that runs from May 2021 to May 2026. In his remarks, he was concerned that Libya's president, Kano Muammar Gaddafi, did not fight back, even when some African leaders were willing to help. Although at that time I did not have direct link with Muammar Gaddafi, I advised his envoy, who came to see me here, to turn Tripoli into a studying grad. With H. E. Jacob Zuma, we had to work out a solution for the aircraft and cruise missiles that some people use to attack defenseless people from far away so that if the, if the aggressors so wished could come on the ground and we fight man to man. The end result of this non-resistance was the toppling of a regime that had been in existence for 42 years and the unfortunate beat, the president, Kano Muammar Gaddafi, was assassinated in cold blood in October 2011. Ten years later, what originally was disguised as a fight for democracy ended up sinking deeper, Libya's growing political leadership. And since then, the project of African uni uh, Unity, a project of a United States of Africa, is sounded by a few. Sounded by a few, like President Museveni, and he's talking about Pan-Africanism, uh, African integration, and seriously, but others have kept quiet. He had taken the welfare of his citizens very seriously because the citizens of Libya were getting free housing, free electricity, free education, and he had turned Libya into a welfare state. At the time of his death, Gaddafi had led Libya as its president for 42 years. But to what extent did the aggressors solve the political question and economic challenges in Libya? They, they never solved any problem. The only, they can only say that they stopped Gaddafi from creating a monarchy in Libya, in Libya. That's all. But they did not solve any problem. We see Libya, which was a prosperous country, becoming a, an unstable nation. The West had allies within Libya because there were many Libyans who were discontented by the way Gaddafi handled their politics, by the way Gaddafi used their resources. And, then, and once you have that division within, any, any, any enemy of yours will take opportunity, even for very useless reasons, and destroy you. Originally perceived to be a fight for democracy, the war in Libya tore the country into pieces. It is reported that Libyans are now pleading 
with the former leader's son to come and lead the country. But just in case it is true, how possible or sustainable is it? Solutions come from inside the problem. If you don't have internal defense, if you don't have internal leaders, you can't get leaders from outside. It's not because you are a son of Gaddafi that you will come and unite the country. You must know what it means, what leadership entails. Had Gaddafi prepared a very good transition where leaders would have democratically made a replacement for him, in 10 years, the son of Gaddafi would be coming now. Like how Uhuru Kenyatta came after his father, after 10 years. We now have a very good leader in Uhuru Kenyatta in Kenya, who is preparing to give leadership to another person who is not his son. Political transition or not, transitional leadership or otherwise, what lessons are there for Africans to learn from the Libyan experience? It was not that Gaddafi was weak. No, he was a very strong man. He had money, he had resources, he had equipment. But fundamental principles of life, you cannot change it. Lessons may be learned, but at the level of the African Union, what could be some of the lasting remedies? If we are having a EU, how I wish we could have a constitution of the African Union, which is like the constitution of the United States of America, where we know that all the states within Africa will comply to the governance constitution. We must, where we can, build a center of gravity for the African race. The Libyan revolution erupted on 17th February 2011, two days after protests in Benghazi that saw security clash with the crowd reportedly leading to some deaths. The protests later escalated into a rebellion that spread across the country and with support from the West, with the European-backed forces, Gaddafi was ousted and killed. Henry Okrut, UBC.